Hello guys, and welcome back to Prequel. I am going to be doing some of the side stories. I'm not sure how long they are, but I should probably keep up to them when I get to like the point they were made in the comic, because that just kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, so these ones aren't going to be for a little bit at least. I've noticed that recently a lot of the pages start getting made like once a month. Um, just from how frequently they get updated and stuff. So I'm guessing that these are going to come quicker than I'm expecting. Um, but as that is, going to start here. Uh, Makali Quest, non canon joke update. Terminal's poison apples are incredibly deadly. Within seconds of consuming the smallest amount, you're dead. I find it unlikely then that Sotil. Uh, Sotil? has either successfully immunized himself or eaten a bite of the wrong apple. I could be wrong, of course. Poison apples as a... Oh, Cadia's aiming practice. Did he eat one of the apples? Oh, he did at the end. He, like, picked one up and ate it. Okay. I have not seen poison apples in Oblivion yet. Uh, sounds about right, considering how acquainted I am with those apples. I keep control clicking, which makes me eat them instead of shift clicking to drop them. Ah yes, old school commands. I was always curious what they thought to find a dead guy in the dining room. You are now Macaulay's Oblivion character. You are performing an assassination, and this requires you to place a poisoned apple on the table. All you have to do is put the apple down without eating it. For any normal person, this would be a trivial task, but you, you're an adventurer. Everything's a federal issue for you. Ah, uh, Homestuck. Anyways, this apple. You just have to move your arm towards the table and... Wrong key. W whoops, where did it go? <laughs> yeah, you messed up. You're no longer... Mu <laughs> You're no longer Macaulay's Oblivion character, because Macaulay's Oblivion character has had their intestines liquefied. <laughs> I don't know how poisoned apples work like that, but hey, good thing Asotil didn't get one of those. Decided I was going t-shirt design. Sounds of was reward for anyone who... We signed into our wait list designs are currently with this update, except for Quillweave's point of view. Which update is this? Oh. Got kicked out before the armor was gone. Reading outside of the place. Should have chased Gaius instead of letting him just kind of walk away. After she learned about her. That's not the back arrow key. After she learned about this stuff from What's-Her-Face, the Daedric Prince, um, and then got laughed out after telling Gaius, oh yeah, my dreams talk to me, yeah. Okay, let's see what this... Your, the links were purple because I just quickly looked at them just to see if they were, like, at all related. Um, let's see here. You're now Quillweave. Did I ever have a voice for Quillweave? Gosh, it's been ages since I've seen Quillweave. Quillweave. Expatiate. Expatiate. That's a word. Nice word. Uh, what was my voice for her? Agonians have a deeper voice. And, uh, hmm. Khajiit has words, if you have the coin. Ja, Khajiit know what you have been up to. Rakamal knows where you have been. Uh, Argonian voices, I gotta look it up again. Yeah, nice word. Nice, nice, nice word. Anyway. No. Nice word. Anyway, after spending all of yesterday cooped up... No, that sounds too, like, regal, magey. Ha! Yeah! Yeah! Nice word. Nice, nice word. Nice word. Anyway, after spending all of yesterday cooped up in your house, pawing over old his- No. Man, I can't do Quillweave wrong like this. What's a Quillweave voice? 
Well, I've got Cadia, who's just literally me trying to be as soft of a voice as I can be. Uh... Nice word. Anyways, after spending all of yesterday cooped up in my house poring over old historical documents from the Raymond dynasty, I've decided to go out and perform some first-hand research for my up-and-coming historical fictional series, Path of the Doomstones. As the name would imply, the series revolves around the Doomstones, the 21 ancient stone monoliths scattered throughout Cyrodiil. The monuments themselves date back to the First Era, and more of them are named after constellations. And most of them are named after constellations. Popular myth holds that the Doomstones harbor great magical power. Like most popular myths, you expect this to be completely made up. Huh. Is that like the... The Standing Stones in Skyrim? I do remember there being stones in Oblivion, but I don't remember them being called the Doomstones. However, I do pride myself on the historical accuracy of my work, and given that one of these doomstones was apparently within walking distance from my house, I pretty much had no excuse not to check it out. If it turns out these doomstones actually do hold some kind of magical power, my entire historical fiction series built on the assumption that they are just rocks is going to look pretty silly. No, worse. It'll look f like fantasy. Bat, bat. And so here I am, at what, according to my research, is known as the Lady Stone. Quite frankly, I'd rather be doing something else. Maybe going bar oscillating, that's bar hopping in a port town that only has two bars, or writing the 19th draft of that meandering and incoherent letter I'm going to be sending to Churl on the next available courier. But no. I have an authorial obligation to determine that this rock is not magical. There certainly doesn't look to be anything magical about it. It looks like a rock. Is this bef- No, this was the same time that Cadia was in What's-Its-Place. I already looked at that. Don't kick it with your foot. Try and place your hand on the doomstone surface. Yes, after centuries of mystery surrounding these stones, it all turns out someone had to do to activate their powers was touch them. But no, really, nothing happens. It's just a rock. In me own land of Skyrim, I have encountered many of a devious trap or doorway triggered by physical force. Wield yon bow, yon wizard, and treat them stow to an arrow feast. It's worth a shot. You're here to discount possibilities, after all. There are no obvious magical targets or anything on the Doomstone to shoot at, but if they made it that tall, any magical trigger would probably be near the top, out of reach of animals and the like. You're not the best shot, but a couple arrows to the top hearts of the stone shouldn't be a problem. Dink. Ping. Wow. Nice shot. Yeah? <laughs> Nobody was around to see you do that, and you will never be able to repeat it. Ever. Regardless, the Doomstone remains non-responsive. That is very impressive. What about those chain things around you? Maybe you have to do something with them to activate it? They just look like regular hanging chains. There doesn't seem to be any kind of pulley mechanism meaning there's probably no tedious guesswork, heavy chain-pulling puzzle, which you're thankful for. Stuff like that is why you left Chazian's D&D group. <laughs> Wait. D&D &D in Oblivion. What would that even be? Like, the whole point of D&D &D is that it's like a fantasy adventure. But if you're living in a fantasy world, what would that even mean? <laughs> Like, how do you get... I guess that's sort of like asking someone who's three-dimensional what the fifth dimension looks like. Like, there's no concept for it. What would a fantasy game look like in a fantasy world? No clue. Anyways. You guess there still could be some kind of magical trigger but built into the chains, but 
Without knowing the Enchanter or their motivations, there would be no way to tell what you need to do. Quillweave. This is the Lady Stone, right? Perhaps old-timey damsel in distress were chained here, and the stone would activate after noble heroes came to rescue them? There aren't enough people here to stage any actual daring rescues, so you just play all the roles by yourself. Makes sense. Makes sense. After kidnapping yourself and chaining yourself to a pillar for an evil sacrifice, you dramatically burst into the stone circle at the last moment and defeat yourself, rescuing you and freeing yourself from captivity, after which the two of you stroll off into the sunset. It was incredibly silly, and the doomstone was not impressed by your performance. Wait, the arrow fell off? But no, really. You're only a few hundred feet from the coast. These pillars were probably for chaining up boats or something. So, chain a boat to it? You didn't expect that to actually do anything, but I've always just wanted to use that useless skill for something. Inspect the runes. They could have a clue. The runes, as far as you're able to tell, are a bunch of meaningless scribbles. In all your second-hand research, you haven't found so much as a translation or even interpretation of them. Their only noteworthy feature is apparently that they're phosphorescent red, and you'll just have to take the book's word on that. Kiss the Doomstone. <laughs> what? It's the Lady Stone, protagonist the typical recipients of magical powers, always kiss the lady at the end of their story. In some cultures, kissing certain rocks is considered good luck. Don't know how true that is, but I also don't know how untrue that is, so I'll just leave it up to neutral. Counterpoint. It's a rock. Are you shirking your writerly research duties? That's the death glare. Fair point. I guess that is how lizards would... Despite prohibitive facial anatomy, you give it your all and try to make out with the doomstone. It tastes like a rock, and unsurprisingly, accomplishes a net total of nothing. Quillweave, use parkour on the doomstone. <laughs> you can't just use... P After about an hour of hopping from pillar to pillar, you finally manage to surmount the doomstone. Even wearing a skirt, you are the queen of jumping. It's you. The doomstone, being an inanimate and non-magical piece of rock, remains stoically unimpressed by your feet. Maybe you should just wait until nighttime and see if the time of day has any effect. May as well. I brought dinner with me. And I guess it would make sense. A stone named after a constellation only working when the constellations are visible. You wait as your thoughts drift back to Cadia. They've been doing that a lot lately. Something you blame on the fact that you certainly could have met under less memorable circumstances. Your friends already poke fun at you for handing out charity like a priest of Mara hands out religious pamphlets. But... Really, I'm just a sucker for happy endings. Not that I'd ever let my peers and writing community know that. Katia was someone who seemed like she really needed my help. Wherever she is right now, I hope she's doing okay. I think she's looking in the right direction. Probably is, since she knows where Katia was heading. And not about to do something incredibly stupid. Welp. Time flies when you're sitting on a 15-foot monolith and consuming copious amounts of rum and chocolate-dipped apples. It's a cloudless night, and the stars and the moons are out at full force. Prime conditions for the operation of a constellation-powered doomstone, if that's what it is. Leap. Touch. Welp, nothing. I guess it's time to call the night. With the sun gone to lighter lands, it is time to reassess those triggers, friend Argonian. Draw on yon bow. Oh, this is the same person. The chain puzzle might only work under starlight. 
You should check those out again. Quillweave, now that the stars are out, you should give the dramatic rescue scene another shot. Maybe it has to be... Maybe they have to witness it. Is your origami boat still secure? It didn't fall off the chain, did it? Come on, kiss the doomstone again. Everyone knows nighttime is one passionate kisses happen. <laughs> yeah. That's... Is this the end of it? Yeah, I'm get... Good response, Quillweave. Good response. Okay, let's see here. Now we've got... For round two of the t-shirt contest, I created an update that gradually revealed itself as more people vote for the design. This one can't fit currently with this one. Ah! What happened when that happened? Still don't know why Caddy is blurred out because it's already pretty much been shown that it's just soft body. Um. Anyway. Wrong one. I know how to click. Anyway, I just caught a glimpse of the image. Okay, Quillweave's perspective again. Playing D&D. See here, lots of drinks, character sheets. They have D4s. Quite a few of them for some reason. Wait, no, those look like D5s. They look like they have five sides for some reason. Uh, anyways, two-player group. Definitely not dangerous at all. The cave is dark and gloomy. It's thick atmosphere sending a bone-shattering chill down your spine. As you descend into its depths, the room opens up before you into a dead-end rectangular chamber. The ground is tiled with small square stones, each little more than a foot in width. The six tiles nearest to you have no apparent binding between them. Almost as if they were meant to be pressed. <laughs> I begin exam wait. What is what is what is Quillweave's character? Probably female. I'm doing like so many calculations in my head right now. Don't worry about it. Um I'm guessing they're first since they're examining. It appears that they have a bow. They might have actually just made their character after themselves. What would be an ideal form of themselves? Probably a ranger, hence the bow, or at least a rogue. I'm going to go with ranger. Rangers out in the wilderness would sound a bit more rugged. So she'd probably just have her voice, but make it a little bit more gruff. I begin examining the tiles for any modulum of information as to what we are supposed to do with them. Yeah, he did fail to mention any descriptiveness of the tiles other than they looked like they could be pushed. Eloquin's research uncovers that the tiles are square and tiles. Whatever device is under them is concealed from sight, and they look too sturdy to remove. I rule for Arcana. Twenty. The wizard Skralsk senses no magic coming from the tiles. Whatever mysterious and exciting puzzle device is found underneath these six tiles is either purely mechanical or its magic is strongly concealed. <laughs> Maybe you should push one. It, they're both. Quilly is more annoyed than the. Is the is the. No, he's just dumb. Um, Quillweave is very annoyed at this. This DM is my spirit animal. Solve his wondrous puzzle, Quillweave. <laughs> I'll push the left tile of your puzzle. Nothing hap. You know what? I'm going to get a drink. <sighs> Wait, those are in quotes. That means her character said it. I actually just got up and walked away from the computer as I said that. Exposit on current situation. Yeah, that sounds about... I 
I would hate if a DM gave me just a bunch of random buttons to push and just told me to do that, which is why I'd never do that as a DM. I'm usually the DM. I'm the DM. Okay. Not that DM, but just in general, I'm the DM for my friends. Thus far, your attempt to distract yourself from some recent events in your life has been an utter failure. Entertainment and human interactions were apparently insufficient for your distraction purposes, so it's time to fall back to Plan B. Plan B is just a ton of alcohol. Wilbur, get me 15 more of those Nord Al's. I'm pretty sure that would kill you. Wait, he looks older. I'm pretty sure that would kill you. He moans. I'm an Argonian, you racist. Fifteen is like bare minimum for pass out on the floor. You're not putting together a very good case here. Yes, putting together a case is what you're supposed to be doing. Hop to it. <sighs> Quail, are you moping? No, you say. Is this about your friend in Choral? No, you lie. Now I'm really curious about the friend in Choral. We've heard it mentioned a few times, but it never gets any exposition on it. It's always just left at side notes like this. Ugh. No, come on, you're acting like a hatchling. You've spent enough time locked up in that box of fruit and booze you call a house. Go, go play with your friends. I tried that. It's not helping. Booze times now. Booze o'clock. Booze o'clock came when you needed booze o'clock. Right now, you need to get up and stop being a mopey aquatic stuck in the mud. That's what she said. Oh... Really, Quill? Three bottles of Al, and we're already at that's what she said? No, I mean, that's literally what she... <sighs> Never mind. Wilbur sighs deeply. How about this? If you're going to mope on my counter and drink alone, at least spring for something like, we both know those bottled Norzels are trash. What do you really want? Wilbur sighs deeply. How about this? If you're going to mope on my counter and drink alone, at least spring for something you like? We both know those Nord bottles are sh trash. What do you really want? Maybe a painkiller. What was that? A uh, painkiller. He almost smiles. I'll have to juice a pineapple, but maybe I can do that. No funny business, though. I'm not letting you go off this counter until I'm too smashed to walk away. Self-righteous Redguard prick. You grumble some more vague Redguard obscenities under your breath as you watch him head off. I'm not moping. I'm simply having a small and much-deserved break from dealing with this world and my problems they're in. The world can wait. I am clinging to this countertop now, and until I'm properly intoxicated, absolutely nothing in the world will make me let go of it. Oh no. Is that promise going to happen? Yeah. Why is it blurred? Well, I, I guess we can blur that part for... Wait, where did the paint on go? Was the paint after this? Oh, this was the first time. So there was no paint at this point. <laughs> Score. Just found a classy bar. Hello, <laughs> handsome there. I guess how many times I've had in the last 20 minutes. Here's a hint. It's between zero and affinity. It's not affinity, or necessarily zero. 
Is there anything I can do for you? Wilbur asked stoically. Why, this for tell of you fast, my good sir, I will... It would just so happen that I'm in the market for a drink. For your belief, for the free variety, as in the current bodily so kindly supplied, it's nearly wretched as empty. I'm afraid everything here costs money, and unless I could interest you in a glass of water... Well, that's the cat's pajamas, because I'd also be willing to work for a drink. You just have to find this. something that this worthless person is what at, and I'll ink that tab away. Here's a hint. It's favors for you, wink. Well, we was freaking out. Makes sense. <laughs> You'll be back. I'm Harris Dipple, and we don't know each other well enough to leave forever yet. If you'll find something you want me to do, and I'll rock you. You'll find something I can do, and I won't be a complete. Uh... Oh, you don't. You wouldn't know looking at me, but I'm actually really good with a yo-yo. <laughs> Wait. Did it just switch hands? The yo-yo just switched hands. What happened? Also, fantasies. I just, like, wanted to get that out there. In case it sounded like the yo-yo is a metaphor. Because it's not. I'm legit okay with that. How did the yo-yo switch hands? Oh, well, hello there. You look like someone more interesting than Mr. Bartender Mc... Bartending over here. Could I interest you in a drink? Except I mean the other way around. 200 proof abstinence. Ah. Uh, is this an intervention, you ask? Is this supposed to show me where my life is headed and scare me into sobriety? Wilbur shrugs. No, this was actually completely unplanned, but if it worked, you still want your god-awful fruity drink? Depends. Are you still refusing me those 15 pints of ale? Point taken. So, this cat girl. You should make out with this girl. All my fanfiction has told me is that it's meant to be. <laughs> why is that the... I mean, I understand the ship, but I don't understand why it's so aggressive. What? Ignoring the fact that you're in a kind of weird drink-your-problems-away place right now with regards to romance. First of all, she's clearly drunk. Second, you have no idea where that mouth has been. Third, she's a Kashit. And you're sure deep down that you're at least a little racist. And fourth, you doubt she'd be particularly receptive to your advances, given what she said before and that she's trying to and what she's trying to do to Gorgo right now. You're not sure why this line of thought would even come up. She could totally be into ladies too. You never know unless you approach her about it. You like and appreciate how this command ignores every piece of reasoning except for the weakest one. You have no interest, and you're sure she'd have no interest either. But how do you know unless you've asked? You, you, you almost forgot you could do this, but... What? Okay, she go... You switch on your gaydar. I'm disappointed, but that's also very funny. Huh. DM. Interesting. And the guards there. Wait. And a cloaked figure. And is that Lucky McLuckface or just another orc? Because the orc that was playing... D&D &D over here is there. 
and I've seen that face before, but I can't remember who he was. Well, that settles it. You can now happily and permanently put to rest every silly and unlikely scenario in which a random nameless cat ends up in your bed. Because that will never happen, no matter what. Nice acrobatics, though. See, she has one skill. <sighs> Are you just using your... Just get me a drink. Oosh, I'm now flying out of the bar and flat on the but wait, n no, I got I that joke's wrong. Nope. Pineapple. That 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 anyone have a pineapple around? I've got this great party trick that was a real <clears throat> a real hit back at the last place that I messed everything up. And everything. But uh, I uh, I need a pineapple. And it's great. <clears throat> that. Oh. Oh, hello again. You. Norn. Aren't you going to follow her? She might be one pineapple away from doing something impressive. Aren't you curious? No. You're perfectly content to stare at this wooden countertop until it's getting plastered time. You harbor no curiosity regarding the nonsensical sequence of events that have transpired around you. You're just going to sit here and deal. So I gather that you've had some kind of fight slash disagreement with your friend up in Charl. And now you're here, moping, totally are in a bar, and passing up interesting, baffling, life-changing experiences? Did you consider that these kinds of reactions might have been what your friend meant when she purportedly called you a stick in the mud? Probably, and that does not make me feel any better about confronting the world again, knowing that she's right about me. So, I'm just going to lay here and be a misanthropic stick in the mud. And then later, I'll write a book about the people who are more adventurous than me, publish it, and make millions again. A wise non wizard of my were world. Oh, this is horrible role player again. A wise non wizard of my world once said, An object at rest will stay at rest until a force is applied. Mayhaps, yon Argonian, that is where thou stand. Caught in a slump or cycle, and unwilling to apply the force to break it. You are hurting, Argonian, and your friend, I bet, was hurting too when you disagreed with her on whatever. Maybe it is time for change. If you want things to change for the better, maybe it's time to stop being a stick in the mud. Maybe thou must go a little crazy, and everything you do will turn to gold. That sounds cheesy, stupid, and you dislike yourself for even thinking it. Quail? Wait, where did you... Mm. Pineapple! I have a pineapple! I have a pineapple, you reiterate. Now, what were you going to do with it? <laughs> well, it's it's really great. I've been told it looks like almost impossible, but I probably maybe don't think it's something you'd be interested. Try me. Take this pineapple and go back in the bar, because I am taking control of my life. I've stopped being a stick in the mud, and I want to see what you could possibly do with a pineapple. Okay, well, if that's the case, the Khajiit says as she accepts your spiky fruit. But, nah, buildings are redundant. It's like... <coughs> Why do we need a second sky made of wood? Also, over here seems like a good place, and I can totally make all the friends. Wait, like... 
Over there, you ask? There are a lot of people around here, and... Okay, he's just kept the same impression. Oh. You suddenly feel like your attempt at taking control may have only further exacerbated this situation. <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> we'll look inside that. Yeah, it's probably booze o'clock now. What did she do? What did she do? Okay. I've caught up on the side stories, and I'm going to leave it there. What's coming up? In a bit, we'll have small side story showcasing Katia's trip to Cyrodiil. Oh, that seems neat. Became the comic's single largest and most complicated page. Ah. So that's a big one. Um, Dodger. No clue who Dodger is. Merchandise found a side story that would gradually appear to be put to taste 28 years before the beginning of prequel. Huh. So is that like baby quill weave? That'd be neat. T-shirts back from Crown Flying Out Package. This everything pack. Now overall story looks it's non canon but feasible. Is that buff Asotil without a leather armor on? Aggie, pass that. Aggie was the ghost, right? Getting over ambitious with Cadia, infiltrate, led to a long hiatus. Whoops. Towards the end of that hiatus, I posted a riveting look at the ancestral guardian's life, in a figurative sense, before meeting Cadia. This looks like swords and sandals, if anyone remembers that. Uh, okay. Well, once again, I'm going to say I'll leave it here, with a bit under half the side stories done, and we'll get to these ones when we get to 2015 in the story. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Anyways, see ya!